last part of this section deals with a branch of math that stems from science a lot. So you've probably seen it before and are pretty comfortable with it. But we want to talk about different ways that we can represent numbers. So we can write numbers using different types of notation. What have we seen so far? Such as decimal. We've seen that. We've also seen fraction notation. What are some others? Percent. Percent notation. We've seen a lot. Another type that makes use of this exponential notation and is used with really large and really small numbers is called scientific notation. And it makes sense because we use it in science a lot because that's when you're dealing with really large numbers and really, really small numbers. Looking at things under a microscope and talking about the length, for instance. That's really small units. So a few examples. The first. The number of flamingos in Africa's Great Rift Valley. 4 times 10 to the 6th. So what does that mean? I've got a 4, and behind it I've got 6 factors of 10, or 6 zeros. So we're talking about how many flamingos? 4 million flamingos in that one valley. So it's more concise to write you know, our scientific notation instead of counting the zeros and trying to rewrite that number a bunch of times. Same for something really small. So the length of an E. coli bacterium is 2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So really small. Point zero 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 two meters. Okay. So trying to, maybe in a paper, in a lab, rewrite this number multiple times without, you know, missing a zero or messing it up at all. It's going to be a lot easier to write it with that scientific notation concisely. So, scientific notation for a number is an expression of that type. M, some number, times 10 to the nth. So, N is an integer, whole number, positive, negative, or zero. And, M has to be between 1 and 10. And M is in decimal notation. So M is in decimal notation, but it's not really small. It has to be between 1 and 10. So we want to convert to scientific notation. First example, 78,000. So where is my decimal? All the way at the back. And what do you notice? If I have a big number, what is my power looking like? It's positive. If I have a really small number, my negative, <laughs> my uh, power here is, is negative, gave it away. So we have to look. In order to get a number between 1 and 10 for n, how do I have to move the decimal? Which direction? To the left, how many uh, decimal places. One, two, three, four. So I'm looking at 7.8 times 10. It's always base 10. And how many factors of 10 do I have? And in which direction do I need to move? So when the decimal is here, I need to move it to the right. I need to make a bigger number. So my 4 needs to be positive. And for part B, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, zeros, and then 5 and 7. So again, here's my decimal. To move it to a number between 1 and 10, what are we looking at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places. So 5.7 times 10. And is my 6 going to be positive or negative? So I'm looking at when my decimal is here, I need to move it in the negative direction to make the number that I started with. It's going to be really small. So really small, we're looking at negative power. Really big, we're looking at positive power. So, other way, other direction. 7.893 times 10 to the fifth. So I've got a positive, so it's going to be a large number, which tells me I need to move the decimal which direction? To the right, 5 units. So one, two, three, I ran out. I can make more. Four, five. So 
So I need to add in some zeros. So 789, 300. All right. Last one. 4.7 times 10 raised to the negative 8th. So is it going to be really large or really small? Really small, so it needs to move in the left direction, 8 points. So what am I looking at? I'm going to write it down here. And I need to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is going to be my new decimal. I'll just erase it from there. And we have to add in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. And we'll put one on the front for good measure. So writing this in a scientific paper is going to be a lot more concise than writing out how many zeros I have for 7. Last two examples on this page that we're going to work with. We're going to convert each of these into scientific notation and manipulate the scientific notation to make sure we get the same answer in the end when I look at this product. So how can we represent 400 in scientific notation? 4 times 10 to the what? second power. And how can I represent 2,000? Again, my decimal's here. I need to move it 1, 2, 3. So I've got 2 times 10 to the third. And if I want to represent 800,000 in scientific notation, I need to move my decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got 8 times 10 to the fifth. So what do we know when we're working with these? Does the order matter with multiplication? Nope. And the grouping doesn't matter as well. So I can group together 4 times 2. And if I'm looking at 10 squared and multiplying it by 10 cubed, how many do I have all together? What am I looking at? So 4 times 2 will give me 8 times 10 to what power? When I have the same base and it's being multiplied, I do what with those exponents? I add them. Did we get the same if we went through the scientific notation? Yep, turns out to be that 800,000. Same story down here. Again, 800,000 as uh, scientific notation looks like what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 times 10 to the 5th, divided by 400. So 4 times 10 squared. What does that come out to be, scientific notation-wise? 2 times 10 cubed. And with our division, okay, we can group our, our normal constants together and then our powers of 10. So when I divide 8 by 4, I get 2. And how many factors of 10 am I looking at? When I have the same base and they're being divided, what do I do with the powers? Subtract them. So I'm looking at 3. Did we get the same? Yes. So we can manipulate large numbers using scientific notation as well, working with our exponent rules. Last example. On the Canadian side, the amount of water that spills over Niagara Falls in one minute in the summer is about 1.3088 times 10 to the 8 liters. A crap ton. How much water spills over the falls in one day? Express your answer in scientific notation. So in the very beginning, this many liters per what unit of time? What are we looking at? This is per one minute. So I've got 1.3088 times 10 to the 8 liters per one minute. And what are we being asked to find? I want how much water spills over the falls in one day. So we need to figure out, I want it to be per one day. Liters per day. So I need these units to cancel. So I need to figure out how many minutes are in one day. So, doing the math. 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. If we do that multiplication, we're looking at 1440. That many minutes. Looking at the scientific notation. My minutes are going to cancel. 
and I'm going to have liters per day at the end. And let's go ahead and rewrite this number in scientific notation as well. Times 10 to the 8th liters, and I'm multiplying that by what? 1, 2, 3. 1.44 times 10 to the 3rd per day. So, if I multiply this constant and that one together, don't worry about it. It's large. 1.884672. So, if I multiply 1.44 and this number together, that's what we get. How many factors of 10 am I looking at? So, I've got 8 over here, 3 over here. All together, 11 of those. Those are our number of liters per day. That is a lot of water. So we just have to work towards having our units cancel out. Minutes divided by minutes, gone. There's a lot of information coming at you in this first section. So again, I think I'd like to summarize everything that we've talked about in the previous section and in this one so you have one concise spot to come back and look back on. So if I have one as an exponent, a to the first, anything raised to the first power is itself. Anything raised to the zeroth power is 1. How can we rewrite this negative exponent with the positive one? Look at the reciprocal. Keeping the base the same, making the power positive. Or if we're looking at the reverse, if I start it this way, how can I rewrite it with my base up top? Look at the reciprocal, make the power negative. Generally, we don't go this way, but doesn't matter what we start with. We have the option for both. When we have same base and multiplication, what do we do with those exponents? Add them. When I raise a power to a power, what do I do with the exponents? Multiply them. If we have a product that I'm raising to a power, I have to distribute n to both. I have to give it to a and to b. Similar story if we're dealing with a fraction. Again, giving it to the top and distributing through. Giving it to the bottom and distributing through. And the last part that we talked about today was that scientific notation. We have a decimal times 10 raised to some integer. And what does m have to be between? What decimal do we have to have out on the front? It has to be greater than or equal to 1, less than 10. 